the hotel that was the inspiration for this film was the seven story hotel that uh, used to live on Rocho Road. Back in the 50s, it was like the creme de la creme of hotels. And as the years went on, it sort of withered away and it became a backpackers hotel. Unfortunately, in 2008, it was uh, demolished uh, to make room for the MRT, but it was an institution. It's a film that went to Toronto, went to San Sebastian, you know, uh, BFI, London, and then Busan. But it was interesting because at those film festivals, I would basically introduce the film and then I'd go in for the Q&A and never really watched it after its completion. So the only time I actually sat through the entire film and with a big screen was last year at the Singapore International Film Fest. And it was really, really fun watching on this big screen. And I suddenly thought, hmm, I think I can make it better. And that's when I started to tweak the film. It's a strange feeling, Cole, to encounter a world so seemingly unknowable, to find oneself slowly understanding. So now yeah. looking at, at, at the finished product, um, I think it's, it's even more spunky than, than what we showed at the, the yeah. festival. The senses were a bit like excited and um, I don't know for what reason. So I'm just really happy that we've got this film now screen uncut and it's always been my intention that, you know, the entirety of the film has to be there. I think you'll like me just because of the sex. It's actually very embarrassing, you know, that we're the only country on earth that has an R21 rating, you know. I mean, I'll go on and say, I've said this so many times, I mean, 18, you can have a, a rifle to kill someone, you know. The legal age for sex for a boy is 17, you know, but you have to be 21 to watch a film. And on top of that, to censor a 21 you know, rated film is ridiculous. If it's just sex and violence, come on, just turn on the internet these days. I mean, it was a very different time, you know, when the rating systems came out. Um, so, yeah, um, they should chill. And to all lovers out there, keep it warm, keep it cosy. It's lovey-dovey time right here on the airwaves. Normally, when I'm directing a film, I like to, to hang out with my actors, but I didn't really have that luxury here because they don't live here. It was really just through, you know, um, emails and a few of these uh, little conversations um, that I pulled together this, this team of actors. Seriously, when they came and arrived, you know, we had maybe, I don't know, half an hour to an hour to just walk through um, the room and say, okay, the blocking's going to be somewhere like that. And come tomorrow, you just act it out. They never read the entire script, so they only read the scripts for their own uh, segments. They liked their characters, and it was important that they also, you know, had time, you know, maybe about a month and a half or so before coming here to also think about what they wanted to do. So when they arrived, they would have points, and I would. Mostly like take whatever they wanted to put into those characters because uh, they, they made very good uh, sense. I had a very good uh, stills photographer, Andy Chow, who's based in Japan and he's really good in terms of nude photography. You know, he does all these coffee table books. So whenever I needed any uh, exciting scenes to be done, I'd get him to go in first with the actors and he'd get them all comfortable and they would just move in and shoot it. For me, definitely look, feel, soundtrack, all very, very important, especially in a film like that, because we don't have, let's say, okay, 1940s popping up or 1950s. You're just watching and you should know that time that you're in. And this great um, art director, um, Arthur Chua, he basically built two mirror rooms. And as we were filming one decade, he would then stage the other room for the next decade. And then my actors would be flying in from all over Asia. So they'd come for like two days, get their stuff done, the next lot would come. Can you imagine if you're in a physical room and to change the wallpaper, and to, it's just not doable. This was the best way of actually getting what we wanted, you know, in a very short amount of time. When I discovered he died, I said, look, shit, I, I gotta do something, you know, and I, I wanna, you know, make this film a bit of a tribute uh, to Damien. And actually, I've been discussing a lot with Nan San Shi, she's our producer, and she liked the concept, um, though she's not really into spirits, and she goes, do you really have to put a spirit in the film? And I said, yeah, because if anything, I mean, Damien you know, started writing horror stories, and he was really, really good at that paranormal feel. I think if Damien would watch the film now, he'd get a kick out of it. Uh, 
at the basis of it all, right? I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty mushy person. I love my dog, I love my kids. And you will see love in, in the works over and over, whether it's the Meepok man and this prostitute he, he falls in love with, or you have 12 stories and it's this brother who lusts for his sister, you know, in a very sort of weird, incestuous way. Um, you know, or you've got like my magic and it's, it's a father's love for his son. And in the room, every story has that love element in it. Um, some a little bit more twisted than others, but it's running through. So I guess, you know, I'm a pretty boring filmmaker in the sense that it's always love that gravitates, you know, and I'm gravitated towards it, you know, and it ends up on my phone. Singapore is a small place, but I, I, I'm happy to say that even though it's small and with not too many Singaporeans, you know, I'm still able to find very talented filmmakers. Um, I make it a point also to watch a lot of short films, and sometimes when I see someone that I feel has potential, then, you know, we'll get them on board our film shoots and uh, get them to, to learn a bit of uh, uh, what it's like on the set. Because I want more, I want more filmmakers to come from Singapore. I think, you know, initially when I started, I was all alone, and it's pretty lonely. So I thought if I could create more, then I wouldn't be so lonely and that, you know, ultimately um, we'll never be a factory that's going to churn out hundreds of films. But I feel if we have enough authors, you know, let's say Anthony Chen, I mean, you know, to actually propel and, and push forward, then, you know, you're going to have better films coming out. And I, I, I always believe that, you know, we may not be the best uh, country for the big budget commercial type films, but we can still probably come up with something that's special and from the heart that will still touch a lot of hearts, you know, internationally. And that's what I'm after, you know, the talented ones.